go ahead and take a seat. We will begin our session the way we begin all of our sessions. Let's take a nice deep breath together. Put your feet flat on the floor. Hands by your sides. Let's take a nice deep grounding breath together. Go. Take a moment to get present to the room. Hmm. Just notice. Notice the room around you. My office here. This is a safe space. It's a place of love and connection. It's a place of learning and vulnerability. Okay. And let's set our intention. Our intention for today's session is to be open, vulnerable, loving, both to yourself and to your, to your friends and family. We want a lot of love to be present. And <clears throat> I know that you want to talk about your parents' divorce today. Yeah. Well... It's a heavy subject. There's a lot to consider. First of all, I want to offer you that parental and adult relationships are very complicated. There, when we're a child, our life can seem very complicated, but it's because it's only based on whatever you've experienced up until then. You have no other, there's no other way for a child to gauge emotional complexity something as complex as a marriage, of which it's going to be challenging. My wife and I, it's not that we fight all the time, but we are in constant communication, um, letting go, uh, listening to the other person, and and it's constant maintenance, um, which is easier said than done, okay? And when our parents divorce us, not us, when our parents do, if our parents divorce, your parents are getting a divorce, it is foundationally shaking to the child, to any child, because our first relationship is with our parents. And in fact, your very first relationship, of course, is with your mother. And as a child, one of the key <laughs> factors that children seek out is number one, Stability, right? Stability is incredibly important for a child. Structure is incredibly important. And children have 
have it, they believe, as we all, I, I believed this, you believed this, that mommy and daddy are never going to separate. And it is when that foundational belief is shattered, it, it's brutal. It's just brutal. Um, I had my own situation happen when I was in the third grade. Um, there used to be a, a thing called a Rolodex. Do you know what a Rolodex is? Probably not. It was this, um, it was this little thing, and it was like a, it had like a little plastic dome on it, like a little rounded dome, and then inside was like a, a little circle, and you could flip through the circle, like this, right? And it had all your contacts, all the people that you knew. So that was your Rolodex. And one day, I was going to the kitchen, and uh, I forget if I was flipping through the Rolodex, or if it had just happened to have been left open under the D's. Well, I look down at that Rolodex, and it says, Divorce Attorney. And there's the phone number. And I remember my heart dropping. It was... It was just inconceivable, you know, um, and of course every child wonders like, well, is there something that I did, is it some, is it, is there something I could do, um, to help, and the answer is unfortunately not really, because the parent-to-parent -parent relationship is completely different than the parent-to-child relationship. <clears throat> now, I later learned, much later, uh, when I was in my 20s, all the details. Maybe, uh, maybe it was in my late teens, like 18, 19. But I learned the details of what was going on <clears throat> in my parents' relationship, what they were struggling with. Um, and, you know, they were able to work it out. Um, and that my parents are still together, but it has by no means been, you know, smooth sailing at all, at all. In fact, you know, my mom is experiencing a uh, kind of a, a personal awakening um, in her early 70s and began in her mid-60s. And... And it's not that it was, like, causing my parents to want a divorce, but, you know, my mother changed a lot of her viewpoints on things. And my parents had to grow. So my point is, oh, you'll never be in a relationship where it's like, aha, this is now good. This relationship is now whole and complete and will remain whole and complete forever. It takes constant upkeep, even when you're in your 60s or your 70s. You still have to maintain and have those difficult conversations. And I remember when I was, you know, the way I emotionally reacted <clears throat> was um, uh, through food. Um, I be I would emotionally eat. And uh, I had it that, you know, the time that I felt the most connection and love was when we were dining as a family. And I wanted those moments to last as long as I could. And so I would eat and eat and eat. And I mean, meal after meal, I would be painfully full, painfully full. And I gained a lot of weight, um, so I peaked in the third grade. There's, there's pictures of me on a vacation in Hawaii around that time. 
and uh, I got to, uh, I was 120 pounds in the third grade. Uh, for context, I weigh about 147 now, so you can imagine, like, I got, I got, I got big, <clears throat> and I, uh, got my first, uh, C's. I had been, uh, a straight-A student, pretty much, A's and B, mostly A's and some B's and all of a sudden, I got my first C on a report card, and I got two, I think, or three C grades on my report card, which was, like, unbelievable. Like, it had never happened to me. And it's because I was terrified. I was trying to keep everything together. I was hoping beyond all hope and shadow that I could somehow keep mommy and daddy together. And I think that is something that all children, to a, one degree or another, want, right? And what we have to learn, though, is that as we become adults and the complexities of life and relationships and having children, children are a huge responsibility. They are a huge um energy focus, you know, they, children are, are, you'll never love, I can only, I'm not a father yet, but <clears throat> every friend of mine, including my parents, I've never heard somebody not say this, when you hold your baby for the first time, the amount of love that you feel for that child is more than you've ever felt for anything in your life. I can only imagine that, okay? I have a deep love for many, many people. My wife, dog, mom, dad, friends, okay? But the love for a child is a very special, unconditional devotion and no parent, at least unless they're a narcissist, doesn't consider um, their child's welfare during a separation. Um, it is it is important to them how you feel that you feel loved and not abandoned. Um, and at the same time, feel an irreconcilable divide between them. So on the one hand, they both can love you unconditionally, deeply, and uh, with everything in their being and still need to take care of their own lives and make themselves feel whole and complete. And have you had a chance to speak with your parents about this? A little bit. I'm sure you're feeling a lot of anger. Um, and remember, you know, remember this. Anger is always a mask for vulnerability. It is. Anger is a tool. I shouldn't say always. Often. Anger is often a mask for vulnerability. It is a tool that we use as humans to protect ourselves because feeling vulnerable and let down is so incredibly painful for our our inner children our the inner the ego the inner child that feeling of of being left or or being abandoned is so painful that our ego responds with anger okay it's totally normal 
and then we go through, it's like the stages of grief, right? Um, <clears throat> and processing divorce is fundamentally no different. You will eventually have to forgive your parents, which may not seem like something you want to do right now at all. And I, I totally get that. But any time that we're holding on to resentment, it is a glass of poison that we are drinking and then hoping that the other person feels the pain. So we feel the resentment and we're just drinking this resentment feeling anger, frustration, rage, shame, um, and all these feelings of, you know, impotent power, like, all those feelings are just resentment, 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 and they're slowly killing us when we indulge in them. And the thing about forgiveness is to remember that there is a massive distinction that many people struggle with, with forgiveness. Forgiveness does not mean you condone the actions of somebody. It doesn't mean you condone it. It means you release it from your burden and it will no longer affect you. You forgive the person so that you can love again, so that you can move on. Forgiveness is incredibly powerful. It's one of the most powerful human qualities that we have the ability to forgive people. I don't know if this exists anywhere else in the animal kingdom. I mean, it is a, you, I think it's a kind of a uniquely human attribute. And, and I'm not saying you have to find forgiveness in your heart right now. Right now, I'm guessing you're feeling deeply sad hurt, frustrated, abandoned. Um, it can feel all those things. And eventually, though, you will have to take on your own agency, your own responsibility, and forgive. Or not. And the emotional damage and wounding will just continue on and on. And, and uh, you'll lash out at your parents, and they may respond. And you can be angry. There's nothing wrong. And it's not that it's unjustified. It's incredibly justified. Your anger is almost righteous. And yet, it doesn't change, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the dynamics of your parents' relationship. I am sure that you do not see the full picture of what they're dealing with. And how could you? You're their child. And there's no way you can know the full story and in fact I you know I would certainly hope one of the very ugly things that happens sometime in divorce is that the parent one parent may try to put the child against the other parent like there's a team like there's team mom or there's team dad uh, and that is incredibly destructive and incredibly emotionally brutal um, and even if they do that, though, if they, you know, try to pick sides and make one person out to be the bad guy, 
I want you to know in your heart of hearts that you probably don't know all the details. And you don't have to. You don't have to. Because that's not your relationship. And it does feel powerless. And it does feel... <laughs> empty, and it feels painful, and... Yeah, all those things are absolutely true. And at some point, we want to get to a place where we can love our parents for everything they are and everything they're not. Yeah. I wish there was a an easy button. I wish there was a an easy path where suddenly everything was just okay. And that doesn't exist. We have to process the emotions we're feeling in a healthy way. And the most important thing, I think, is to not deny whatever you're feeling. Whatever you're feeling, I encourage you to feel it. If it's anger, be angry. Give yourself full permission to just be pissed off because sometimes you just need that. And sometimes you're going to feel really sad, really sad, and that's okay. It's something that you are going to have to process. You have to go through the anger, the grief, and eventually the acceptance. It is, it is, I wish there was another way of processing emotions, but my experience in life does not tell me otherwise. I have yet to, uh, I've yet to find a shortcut to emotional health. It is a, it's just, it just, it's just hard. It's just hard. And it's not fair. It's not fair at all. And that's a tough one. Because one thing that's really easy to do is to feel like you got victimized. It's very easy, and the, and the problem with it is there's a million ways you can justify it. All of us can probably, off the top of our heads, rattle off five ways we've been the victim. And the problem is, I've never seen any, any use come out of going down that tunnel. We have to take responsibility for our own lives and your relationship with each of your parents ultimately will come down to you. So, if you need anything over the next few weeks, please do not hesitate to call. Um, this is not going to fix itself overnight. There's going to be a lot of it's going to be a lot of pain and a lot of anger. And you're going to be okay. You're strong. You're vibrant. And you're, emo you're healthy. You're going to be okay. And it sucks. And you're going to be okay. Okay? Okay. Well, did you... me, please, if you need anything, please call me, okay? You're gonna be okay. You're gonna get through this. All right. Okay. I'll talk to you soon.